Football Index is a betting firm that calls itself the football stock market. Actually, I should say it was a betting firm as it's been widely reported in the news over the past couple of weeks that Football Index has collapsed into administration and cost its customers upwards of 58 million pounds. And guess he was one of them. Me. At the moment, it's showing that I have lost around 90% of my portfolio. But since the company's gone into administration, I can pretty much kiss all this money goodbye. And I've been asking myself a lot of questions over the past couple of weeks. Firstly, how was I so stupid to invest in an unsustainable company? And secondly, why didn't I just invest in GameStop or Bitcoin instead? Welcome to the most expensive YouTube video I'll probably ever make. This is the story of how Football Index conned the British public out of £58 million, including, most shockingly, Louis Tomlinson of One Direction. So before I start this video, I just want to say that if you are personally affected by this, I really do recommend talking to someone about it. For me personally, it's been a big weight off my shoulders to be able to discuss it with someone. And even if there isn't anyone in your immediate circle that you'd be comfortable talking to, there are a number of outlines out there who are willing to listen to you without judgment. So I've left a few numbers in the description. Also, make sure to follow FI Group Action on Twitter who are looking into possible legal action against Football Index to recuperate at least some of the money back that's been lost on a no-win, no-fee basis. So if you are personally affected, also be sure to check that out. Football Index was founded in 2015 and it was an artificial stock market where people could buy and sell shares in football players and these shares would pay dividends depending on how well the player did in a match or how much attention they got in the media. So you'd think you'd need a bit of knowledge about financial markets or even gambling to create this from scratch. But of course not. You know, if you're going to create your own Ponzi scheme, all you need is a bit of money and a lot of confidence. So the founder of Football Index's CV of previous experience actually includes Oh, wait, what? Starting an adult film VHS company. Why did I give this guy my money? Then you can combine some of this money with the money of a few hundred investors on Cedars by releasing a neat little promotional video and you're ready to get the party started. Oh, I can already tell this is going to be horrific to watch back. The world's first football stock market. Where you can literally buy and sell football talent with real money. Gambling can be a brutal and expensive form of entertainment, as many of us know to our cost, and in the end, usually the operator wins. But our proposition is different. We don't just sweep the stake off the table. It may vary in value, but you get to stay in the game, and ultimately you get the opportunity to sell your bet back into the market. Gambling can be a brutal and expensive form of entertainment. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Football Index was successful at distinguishing itself from other gambling firms because you weren't just betting on the outcome of one game or one season, you were betting on or investing in a player's whole career. The bet lasted for years so that even if the share price went down for a bit, you could wait for it to go back up again before selling it. And the dividend payouts were very small, only a few pennies a share. So to make any significant amount of money on Football Index, people had to pile in and often invested thousands. And to encourage people to join, there was the promotional offer of being able to invest 500 pounds risk-free in your first week. So this is a nice example of the anchoring effect where people place too much importance on the first piece of information they receive when making a decision. In this case, subconsciously setting the idea of 500 pounds as the normal investment meant that after the first week, 500 pounds seemed like a reasonable figure to continue investing in, except it wasn't really an investment. It was just a bet. And people not into traditional gambling got into this because it was marketed as something safer than traditional gambling, but also with much higher returns than investing in traditional financial markets. For early users of Football Index, the return on investment was very high. The amount of new customers was increasing with each new customer buying more shares. The price of pretty much every player in the market was increasing. So pretty much everyone who signed up to Football Index in the early years was a winner. And to sum up, this quote was proudly displayed on the Football Index website. 74% of people said they tend to lose money on traditional gambling. 2% said they tended to lose money with Football Index. Now when Charles Ponzi claimed to be able to pay out a 50% return on investment in 45 days, this was actually true for the first customers because there were enough new customers coming in and putting their money in so that the first investors could be paid out successfully on their investment. So this quote clearly raises the question, who is paying for the 98% of customers who are winning? Surely not the new customers. Football Index managed to make itself into much more than just a gambling firm. The task for them was simple. Say what you need to say to meet the requirements of the Gambling Commission. This should not be viewed as an investment vehicle. And then in your marketing, put all of that to one side and relentlessly use language from the investment world. Traders, portfolio, shares, stock market, investors, dividends. All of these fancy words dress up what 
were ultimately bats. Most interestingly, they created the term FTSE, which, similar to the FTSE 100, was the sum of the share prices of the top 100 players. So for something that should not be viewed as an investment vehicle, they certainly blurred the lines between investment and gambling. And this was the foundation of a huge marketing drive. There was talk of a 13 million pound marketing budget, adverts on the side of football pitches made to look like financial markets. They provided shirt sponsorship for QPR and Nottingham Forest, so that when they played against each other, they called it the Football Index Classico. Taxis, billboards, social media adverts, the list goes on. So it managed to market itself as an investment company, but Football Index also managed to create a huge social community around it. Lots of Football Index players created Twitter accounts with FI in their handle, and the most famous of these were showing off their successful trading, making over six-figure sums. And the Facebook group of Football Index players reached over 8,000 users, many of whom would post about what they spent their profits on, including houses and cars. So when joining Football Index in the glory days, it really felt like there was a strong community to discuss trades with and ultimately make money with. Football Index had to build its reputation from scratch, and what better way to do this than to piggyback on existing companies' credibility? Firstly, and most importantly, you need the Gambling Commission's blessing to start a real betting firm. Now, do you need a watertight financial plan to get this? Probably not. Lots of things slip through the net of the Gambling Commission, and firms are getting suspended all the time. So getting this initial approval will be nice and easy. And with this approval alone, you're pretty much set, because in any event that someone criticizes Football Index for being a scam, they can simply say, we are licensed and regulated by the Gambling Commission. Then by registering as a company in Jersey instead of the UK, you can hide all your accounts from the public. Then as the company grows, simply repeat year after year how Nasdaq will be integrating their technology into the market. And perhaps as the company continues to skyrocket in investments, you'll make it into the 2020 tech track top 100 fastest growing technology companies. I don't understand how it's big class as a technology company, but Football Index must have been chuffed with this. They've been described exactly the way they wanted, as a football trading platform instead of a gambling firm. And they seem to have had a 306% sale rise over the last three years. Happy days for them. In the early days of a Ponzi scheme, you can draw people in by promising wild returns. With what evidence? The early investors have been successful and have indeed got these incredible returns that you promised. In 2019, the Advertising Standards Authority warned Football Index that they were presenting the product falsely as a lucrative investment opportunity, when in fact it was a betting product and did not make the associated financial risks clear. They told them to ensure their future marketing communications did not encourage gambling behavior that was socially irresponsible, and that they did not create the impression their product was an investment opportunity. So did they do these things? Looking at the terminology they've used since then, I think it's pretty clear that Football Index continued to present themselves as an investment opportunity. And as for not encouraging gambling that was socially irresponsible, well, here's what the CEO of Football Index had to say about maxing out your credit card and putting that money into Football Index. Um, so all you've got to do is max out your credit card, effectively, yeah. <laughs> um, and that's, that's your leverage. And as long as you can beat the APR on your credit card. <laughs> so Football Index was arguably so safe that you could take out loans and max out your credit card to invest in the platform. And the CEO even talked about how the Football Index was outperforming the Bank of England interest rate every 12 hours. And all of these things probably aren't encouraging financial responsibility. Would this be a red flag to a rational investor? Absolutely. But that's okay, because people were so successful on Football Index that they could simply rely on confirmation bias. People have made much more money than a loan interest rate in the past. So that means in the future it's going to work when I take out my own loan and put that into Football Index. And for the people winning, they are in the ultimate bind of gambling. People who lose the most money gambling often start off looking like geniuses making incredibly successful punts. But when you win, it's all too tempting to continue gambling with the hope of making even more money. And on Football Index, your bet is over when you sell your shares and withdraw your money from the platform. But why would you withdraw your money from Football Index when the share prices were continuing to go up, they were increasing dividend payouts, COVID, COVID kicking in and stopping all the football. When this happened in March 2020, Football Index's growth started to slow down quite a lot and people started to withdraw knowing that there wouldn't be sports for a few months. And interestingly, around this time, Football Index turned off the instant sell function, which would allow you to sell your shares back to the platform. So from this point, if you wanted to sell your shares, your only option was to sell them to another player who then had to sell them to another player in order to get out themselves. So at this point, the only 2% of people lose money from a football index figure might not be around for long. And over the next few months, despite making a lot of changes to the platform, people continued to trickle out of football index and football index had to respond. Eventually, they created four ways of seeing the price of your shares, with the highest being average all offers. So with the new average all offers price display, your portfolio could be pretty much whatever you want it to be. Even with people starting to leave the platform, your portfolio could still look as healthy as it did in 2018. So at this point, with COVID causing some people to leave the platform and the amount of new customers to start drying up, Football Linux might have been wondering, 
have we increased the dividend payments too much so that we can't afford to pay them out anymore? And wouldn't it really irk our customer base to announce that we have to decrease the dividend payments? Yes, it would, but that's okay because in the terms and conditions, we've put everything we need to get out of that situation if it arises. And until then, we can continue to make wild promises and continue with this investment marketing terminology to get more money into the platform. As of 2020, Football Index have been going for five years, but since the start of the pandemic, things have started to unravel a little bit. So at this point, it was inevitable that critics were going to come out. So how could they deal with this? Firstly, they needed to make sure that everyone in the company was on the same page. You know, you can't be having any dissidents within your own company. So it seems like people might have had to sign a non-disclosure agreement of some sort because the former chief technology officer of Football Index, who left in 2019, said in a tweet, he left because they had no idea what they were doing and knew their model was flawed. And recently this tweet has been deleted. So make of that what you will. As for criticism from the wider community, Football Index, as recently as the 5th of March, one week before going into administration, branded the criticism as trolling from a very small group of people looking to discredit the business in any way they can. Pretty disappointing and, if to some extent, unavoidable phenomenon. So who were these trolls attempting to discredit the business in any way they can and making these wildly inaccurate statements? Carl Berry was perhaps the most accurate critic of Football Index, explaining in December why the platform was unsustainable despite Football Index's CEO repeating that they were financially stable and were looking forward to an excellent 2021. He even pointed out to the Gambling Commission, I would hate to see a Daily Mail headline of people who've lost tens of thousands of pounds in what they thought were shares. With hindsight, Mr. Berry was 100% right, but at the time Football Index refuted all of these criticisms. And who helped them with this? Why, of course, the people in the community who had made lots of money with them successfully in the past. Of course, not everyone who was on Football Index had their head completely in the sand against criticism, but there was definitely a subgroup with a kind of cult-like mentality who were perfect for responding to any criticism leveled at Football Index. They even left lots of bad book reviews on Mr. Berry's website. But perhaps more than criticisms, the Gambling Commission themselves actually opened an investigation into Football Index in early 2020. But for Football Index, this was no problem at all because they didn't make it public or take any action against Football Index until after the firm had collapsed into administration. So in that time, the investigation was taking place People were continuing to deposit thousands of pounds into the platform, not knowing that it was ultimately doomed. So at this point in a Ponzi scheme, everything is screwed. From Football Index's perspective, the dividend payments have increased so much that they can't continue to pay them out. And the amount of new customers is drying up so much that they would have to decrease the dividend payments in order to continue as a company. So basically, you're running out of money to pay people. But that's okay, because it's now time to make the great escape. And how would you do that? Simply by pretending everything is fine. Schedule a Q&A for next week. Continue to say that Nasdaq will be getting involved, even though you shelved the project in November. And chuck in a couple more buy order rebate promotions to get one last round of investment into absolutely nothing. So after this one last payday from a bunch of promotions and rumming up of hype for a Q&A, it's now time to announce that the dividends have to be cut for financial stability by around 80%. And at this point, it's just a race for the bottom for traders to sell their shares to each other and get out of the platform while they can. And on the 11th of March, this culminated in Football Index announcing that they had to go into administration. And perhaps there'll still be people who have been successfully conned into thinking they're making an investment rather than a gamble, but they're still celebrating receiving dividends on the Facebook group today. The story of Football Index is likely to go down as one of the biggest betting scandals in history. And while it may seem that this is a case of, yet again, gamblers being foolish with their money and betting on the wrong things, it's actually more than that. It's a failure, of course, of Football Index to run their company in a sustainable manner. But more than that, it's a failure of the Gambling Commission to oversee and step in on what was an unsustainable business. The director of Clean Up Gambling, Matt Zob Cousin, puts it best. It's one thing to lose money on a fair wager based on the performance of a footballer, but the gamble shouldn't have to extend to the solvency of the platform you're betting on. So for people to say that it's just the gambler's fault for losing money on Football Index, basically is blaming the gamblers for how Football Index ran their own company. There are so many questions for the Gambling Commission to answer from this. And even from the start, how is it that you can market a gambling company relentlessly as an investment opportunity? and then put in tiny letters at the top of the site that should not be viewed as an investment opportunity. And actually, four days after Football Index announced it was going into administration, the CEO of the Gambling Commission resigned. So clearly, it's gonna be a long and drawn out process for anyone to have a chance of getting their money back. So 
If you are personally affected by this, again, I just want to say that do talk to someone about it and also sign up for the collective group action. So what is the lesson we can take from all of this? Perhaps next time you're in a Ponzi scheme, just get out before it collapses. Wait, no. If something is too good to be true, then it probably is. So that is basically everything I have to say about Football Index. And this was partly also a therapeutic exercise to vent about the amount of money that I've lost. But anyway, feel free to leave a comment below, tell me what you thought of the video. And I upload videos every Sunday about psychology and self-improvement. So if that's up your street, feel free to subscribe for more. And I'll see you next week with another video.